All right, Fatima joined the Down to Business podcast today. And while some of you may know her for her current brand, Ali Fendich, do you know where she originally came into business as and what the name was? And even the, some of the switches that she made along the way? Well, if you're not too sure, I would definitely tap into this episode because she was able to walk us through that timeline, you know, give us really where her focus was when she came in some time ago, how she was able to transition, how she was able to gain some interesting things, learn some new things, add to her versatility and now where she is today and just the plans that she has, not only for the women, but for the fellas as well. We just got to be a little bit more patient. But no, she really talked a lot about, you know, fashion versus style, really a lot of her motivations behind things, really a lot of her inspirations and how she's able to really curate some of the pieces and some of the dope things that she's able to make. So without further ado, enjoy episode 101, Signature Style versus Fast Fashion. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. Man, I love creativity. I love, you know, when people can, in a sense, really just get in their own bag, really just find something that works for them. But then on top of that, once they find, you know, what works for them, what they're they're really feeling, then other people are able to resonate it. And, you know, oftentimes in, in a few of the episodes that I've had, we've, we've talked about things where, you know, people kind of have started things on their own or have just had interests or have just had particular hobbies that they like. But it wasn't until, you know, that they put it out to the public or may have just posted something or may have been talking about it that other people are like, yo. I kind of like that. That's kind of fire. Like, you know, you should you should do a little bit more. So oftentimes we also see that it propels them to one, get in the business, one, put it on more of a grander scale. So I I say all of that really to say that's kind of the what I'm getting from this this woman who I'm sitting down with today, man. It was something where, you know, I noticed that in, in the beginning she was a creative. She was just she just wanted things to be unique. She had kind of her own style with things. And then eventually she started to push it out. To the, to the followers, to the public, to colleagues, friends, family, everything like that. And people are resonating with it now. And now I'm seeing people, you know, rocking the fits daily, rocking the, I kind of just gave it away too. I ain't even want to, but rocking, you know, the styles <laughs> and everything daily. And she's really been able to, you know, expand. But on top of that, enter different sectors, I would say. She's she's kind of been experimenting with different things. And I, I love it. I love the results. I, I'm pretty sure that the ladies and everybody who she's worked with love the results and everything like that. So I'm excited for one, y'all to be able just to get a little bit deeper dive into the creative process of this woman. But also two, you know, you can kind of be able to collaborate with her. I know we're kind of really big on this space. Now everybody wants to be a fashionista or fashionable or whatever you call it. So hopefully, you know, she can hook you up and, and, and get something going that way. So Fatima, how are we doing today? How's everything? Good. How are you? All right, man. I'm, you know, another day I get to sit down with a with a business owner, with an entrepreneur. I'm always happy. So for the people out there, we're going to get a host of different people. You know, you're about to blow up. You're about to go crazy. It's about to go wild. Um, Can you, one, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself? And then two, can you just tell us what brings you on the Down the Business podcast today? Yes, I am Fatima Alifendich, which I'm the owner of the Alifendich brand. Um, I make clothes. A little bit about myself is I'm a um, East Carolina alumna, and um, I was a biology major. Um, I'm in the field of doing like biology work, but my real passion is obviously fashion and style. And while I'm working, I still want to do that as a main thing. But until I can get it to be a main thing, that's like my side for right now so and what brought me here is um just connecting with you seeing your podcast seeing other like entrepreneurs business and i'm just saying like okay well i kind of want to expand my brand reach more people than i already reach because right now kind of who reaches me is people who i went to school with friends family things like that so yeah I'm glad you said that the the word ali and each because i was looking at it and i was just like you know <laughs> Normally, before I start the interviews, I always ask, you know, for political purposes, let's just, you know, I, but I didn't ask you, but I'm glad you said, I was just like, I'm going to make sure she says it first. I'm not going to utter this word. I'm not going to ask her to pronounce it. I'm going to let her say it. And then once I heard, I said, oh, so I was on the right track. I had it, but I just, you know, everybody just pronounced things a little bit different, but no, I love that. I love, you know, the fact that it's, it's all about expansion, especially the time that we're in. It's, it's one thing to, you know, have a particular market or have a particular audience or have a particular crowd that you really want to tailor yourself to. But it's another thing, you know, once you've realized that, once you've realized that you've reached these people, you've been able to communicate with these people, collaborate with these people, whatever, honestly, it entails, and you want more. You want more for yourself. It's good that, you know, you want the brand to expand, you're expanding, everything. So exactly. first thing I heard, biology, but your real passion lied within, you know, fashion. So where did that 
when? Like, when did that interest kind of come up about? Was it always just something that you really had? But would you say you really honed in on it when you got to ECU? Was it something where after kind of getting in bio, you were like, wow, like this is kind of, I'm going to speak for myself. Bio is, is kind of difficult to me. My sister studied bio. Mm-hmm. I'm not a science guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. Not, that's not really my thing. But, yeah, when ultimately did your interest really peak when it came to fashion? Um, So I want to say I always been into fashion, like, you know, dressing nice, you know, finding my own style, stuff like that. Um, But as far as creating, so I don't know if you knew, but like my first brand was like um, called Brushes by T. And it was kind of like paintings, like um, some like crafts and stuff. So I've always been into like DIYs, I mean DIYs and um, crafts and stuff like that. So with starting like my business, um, going from like studying biology and being like, uh, kind of rather like business and style, I was already like senior year, already done, almost done. I'm trying to graduate. Like I'm not trying to go back and change my major to be fashion, which has nothing to do with biology. So it would have pushed me back all the way back. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't really need a degree to do what I do with my business. So I was just like, let me just finish off with biology. I know this is going to make me money. And I'm actually going back to school um, for clinical laboratory science, which again, has nothing to do with fashion. But Um, it is going to have like me have the money to be able to invest more into my business and stuff because the fashion world costs a lot of money and so does making clothes and doing all that, um, costs a lot of money and time. So yeah, with biology, it's not that I don't enjoy it because I do, um, but it's not like my passion. Got that. So no DUIs, y'all. We're definitely very responsible. Oh yeah. No, no, no. um, (laughs) No, I get that. I think that kind of. I think you kind of touched on two things there. And I think the one of them is that, okay, you recognize that this may not, bio may not be, you know, your top, like that's your go-to, like it's what you want to do. But essentially you recognize one, you already have some experience with it. You already have a knowledge base of it. You've already studied it in a sense. Two, like you said, money, man, money talks, especially when you're stepping out into the mm-hmm. world, this entre- of entrepreneurship, of business ownership, of, of creativity, man. It's, it costs money to, to, to do this stuff, it costs mm-hmm. to, you know, look good, to feel good, everything like that. So you recognize that these essentially, while they have no relation to each other, they can almost go hand in hand with helping you and propelling you into your business. So I love that. I think that that's, that's smart. I couldn't do it, but you got it because clinical laboratory sound kind of crazy to me so i'm gonna let y'all i'm gonna let y'all have that but big shout out to y'all you know because we need we need every bit of that so we're thinking about what you do we're thinking about when you really started to get into this realm i would say how did it start like was it you making just was was it you just making things for yourself or did you start off with clothes specifically was it accessories where did you then get a lot of feedback did then start making stuff for people and then was that a way of you branding yourself what was really that process like to get it to where you are right now So with, like I said, I had like the first business venture, which was just like um, crafts and stuff. So that was mostly from doing stuff, like making gifts. Like the gifts I give, I like to make them personal. So like I just crafted everything. So that's how that started. And, you know, I had a good run with that, you know, but I realized that still wasn't my my passion. You know, it was just kind of like a business venture at the time. And I think I started that like junior year. Um, and then senior year, um, COVID hit and I was kind of like, okay, well, let me venture into what I actually want to do, which was the, the clothing thing. And I started off with just doing like taking stuff that was already made and then just adding like a few details, cutting, you know, doing all that was like slides, like furry slides, stuff like that, stack leggings, the basics. And then I think after graduating and moving back home is when I really was like, okay, I want to kick into really taking this more serious. And um, what started off with making clothes was really just making clothes for myself because it's easy to craft stuff when the model is like right there you know so like you know it was easier to just go ahead and practice on myself figure out things and then what really got me making stuff is like 
again, I like to style. That's like my main passion, like styling, putting clothes together, things like that. And like, I realized when I'm like shopping, I can't find certain items that I need for an outfit. So I was just like, okay, well, this is in my head. I'm just going to take whatever's in my head and try to create it. And then that's how that basically that's how it started. And then after that, creating for myself, I was just like, OK, well, people keep asking me, can I can I make them this? Can I make them this? Can I? And I was just like, OK, well, OK, let me take this and actually make it into a business. So I, I love to hear the how you worked your way up the totem pole in a sense, like you said, it really started with the brushes by T. And then, like you said, after you gained some traction with that, it, it came to a thing of you noticed that it was hard for you to find certain things. So it's easier for you to, you know, just make those things, just craft those things. And something else I heard too, you give handmade gifts. So we, we my birthday is coming up in July, so I'm going to definitely need some hand, now I'm playing. But yo, for all of y'all, you know, <laughs> friend Fatima, man, she might, she might look out for you with the handmade, the customs, the crap. I love stuff like that now rather than, you know, shopping. Because gift giving is hard in general. But when it comes from the heart, when it comes from, I don't, I'm big on it's the thought that matters type thing. But I like things where you could tell people put effort into it, not just, oh, mm-hmm. put the car, whatever, whatever. So no. Yeah, y'all hit me up. Yeah. So, so, so get right with her, man. But no, I'm hearing that, you know, after you were able to pretty much recognize that there was a problem, you found the solution immediately. Okay, well, I can start doing this myself. I can start, you know, if it's nothing more than adding some fur to the slippers, stacking the leggings, which I'm actually very curious about. I'm going to ask you that at the end of this, but, and then you said from there, okay, well now other people are like, and other people ask me where I got that from. And it's nothing like asking somebody, yo, where'd you, I love that. Oh, I made this. It's me. Oh, hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold on come on. Oh, that is the best oh, feeling. That is the best feeling. I really like something that, or my, for me, cause I don't make clothes, but whenever I'm wearing my friend's brand, like I got on Quan J thing right now or whatever. Yeah, I see. I, yeah. Come on now. But, and people are just like, yo, like, what is that? I really love that. I'm just like, well, actually, this is my homeboy. Like, this ain't no Gucci. This ain't no Louis. This ain't no, you know, no, no. This is really like somebody you can go talk to them. You can, t- he got customs, everything like that. So I love that. Mm-hmm. But, and I think a lot, like I even spoke to at the beginning of the interview, I think a lot of times we don't recognize that a lot of our ventures, a lot of our hobbies, a lot of the things that we decide to do or pique our interest are, are just everyday life things. Like you said, you found a problem. Easy solution. A solution that you may not have been thinking of like right then and there. But as you realize, yo. I can do this. I can make this. I'm right in front of myself. I can model it. I can try. I don't got to call up you. I don't got to do this, do that. And then on top of that, start mm-hmm. getting the word of mouth feedback. So I love, I love that work up, man. So, okay. How do you stack a leg? Like, how does that, how do you, <laughs> that, that may sound like a crazy basic question, but if mm-hmm. you're making these by your, cause you, cause you, cause the reason why I asked it, was because you said, I start off with the basics, added fur to the slippers. I stack the leg. And to me, I look at a stack leg and that's a complex piece of clothing it's, you know there it looks like it took some itch i don't know if they just scrunched it up a little bit like what it almost looked like, mm-hmm. like they scrunched you know so yeah how do you walk me through that process of stacking a leg so like i said before with the first business venture um i actually skipped a brand name so i went from brushes by t to everything is not what it seems and then i got to elephant beach so while i was with everything is not what it seems um that's when i did the stack leggings in the first slides and the stack leggings basically you just take two pairs of leggings you cut the bottom off of one pair and then you cut one all the way like real short like shorts type you take the part that the longer leg from the the pair that you cut to make shorts, you flip it and then you just sew it back to like sew it to the end that you just cut off. Yeah. And she, <laughs> and she tried to just like run through that like it was so natural, y'all. And I'm just like trying to picture the legging in my head. All right. So I'm a I'm a That's the most and that's the easiest thing that I've ever created. Like now I'm now I move past taking stuff that's already created. Now I'm actually buying yards of fabric and cutting stuff and creating from there so yeah i've very i've moved up come on now so it feels good yeah that's really what it's about that progression that even you keeping yourself versatile you learn how to do new things just when you know not necessarily just when people get tired of a certain thing but just when people get oh she she does that that, that's what she does for a fact you throw another Mm -hmm. you hit them with a double whammy you throw something else in there oh now she just straight from the fabric straight from scratch that's hot so all right i'm glad you brought that up so one, why did you make that transition? Why did you begin to basically say that, okay, I have 
I have a niche here. I have a skill. I can make these clothes. I can add on to, I can accessorize things. I can pretty much custom whatever you come to me with. Let me, let me up the ante a little bit. Let me challenge myself. Let me add this to the arsenal. Why did you like, why did you decide to do that? So, um, I'm going to touch on a few like other businesses that I noticed and why I kind of ventured off this way. So with the first where I was just doing stacks and first slides, that didn't take much. I would just order the, the slide, get the hot glue gun, add the fur to the slide, you know? And I just felt like, you know, that was just so not saying it was plain and not as creative as I know I can be. I was just like, this is not, it's kind of complacent for me. Like, I think I could challenge myself. And for the longest, like, I was more scared of failure and not wanting to, like, think I could do something and then fail at it versus just trying it and seeing if I can do it. And um, the businesses I want to touch on is, like, for the, I, originally, I wanted Elephant Beach to be jewelry bags and hopefully like perfumes and stuff like that like i want it to be more of like a high brand luxury type which it, it still can be you know with the clothes but i originally just wanted it to be bags and and jewelry and stuff like that because that's really what i'm passionate about and um so at first i was just gonna go to a wholesale website buy some stuff make it a little instagram boutique you know like that i'm sure you've seen various brands like that and not to knock them or anything but i just felt like that wasn't that's not coming from like a creative standpoint or i can't really just say that's something i created because it's not i just bought it from a website that somebody else could easily go buy and sell on their website so that's kind of how I wanted to venture into making it more than just stack first slides, bags and stuff that I could buy from like a wholesale website. Like I wanted it to be something that, oh, I can go to her website and I know for a fact this is the only place I can find this piece at, you know, or I can hit her up and ask her how to style this and that. And so, yeah, that's how adventure to that. I love that. And I wouldn't even really take that as a knock. Personally, me hearing that, you know, you just recognize that you're in a space, you're in an industry, you're in something that other people do is populated. You, you want to put your own spin on things. You know, a lot of times that we think about the hairstylists, we think about the clothes, we think about hair, oh, I say hair twice, but makeup, all of that. <laughs> Everybody is doing it, like you said. So in a sense, what's stopping me from going to Fenty versus Sephora versus, all right, I ain't got too many makeup brands. I, so I probably <laughs> the wrong like side to go to, but y'all know what I'm saying. Like basically what's stopping me from yeah. here versus there with him or with her. So I think that you easily differentiated yourself. You know, you wanted that custom look because stepping into that space, doing that, it's only going to be one Ali Fendich. It's only going to be one Fatima, you know, really putting the spin on things and different things like that. Anybody can, like you said, buy it from the vendors, get it in bulk add your little spin to it or just straight wholesaler on the boutique, which we see time and time again, which I definitely agree with. Mm -hmm. I think that wanting to differentiate yourself, wanting to kind of separate is important. And it, it also kind of will keep you motivated in a sense too, because like you said, you could have easily became or continued to be complacent or felt stagnant or just felt, or just settled and just said, Hey, I found a good vendor. They ship the products on time. I'm in a rhythm. I can afford this right now. I'm still working. Let me just keep doing this. Let me mm -hmm. just keep boutiquing it. Let me just keep making it happen. Okay, cool. You can do that, you know, until eventually other people start to pick on and the boutiques are starting to, you know, it's nothing like looking at three boutiques and you've seen the same Then product, they got the same the thing. Same products across the board. You know, nothing against, like I said, the people who put in those works because- they And there's perks. You know, there's a lot of benefits to doing the boutiques and the wholesalers because first time- saves a lot of time. You don't have to sit here and craft anything. Like, you know, there's a lot of people who love those Instagram boutiques because they need an outfit right then and there. And that vendor it can easily just ship those items. They're already in bulk, ready to ship. So, you know, there's always the pluses of doing it that way money-wise because those Instagram boutiques are making constant income because they constantly have products going in and out versus me. Somebody places an order. It's going to at least take me two to four weeks to make that order. It's not going to be like an instant toner of your time for versus me going and buying something from AliExpress in bulk, getting it shipped to me and somebody orders it. I'm like, Oh, I got 
three smalls right here in the box. All I got to do is just go to the post office, you know? So it's just like, there's definitely benefits, but it's just not what I wanted to do for my brand in particular. Cause it's not, oh, it's for me, it's not about the money really. Like it's a perk that I'm able to use my um, creativity and things. And there's actually people who want to support me that way and actually buy from me, but it's more so like me just expressing myself really. So that's, that's how that's what it's about for me i like it and and honestly it, it doesn't matter who else doesn't like it as long as you like it that's that's all that mm-hmm. honestly as you found what works for you you found your lane you found your niche that's not to say everybody else who is in their particular lane in their particular field whatever they're doing is cool but something that that kind of reminds me of is just i remember when it's something about just getting something handcrafted or personally made or just for you where it's just like you open that box or you start using it you just like damn like even if it's not working, is you gonna act like it's real? Oh, this is working! Like this is real! Like you know, rather than just going. Because I think about, I think about handcrafted products or like, like yeah, when it comes to like anything like soaps, like the washes, like mm-hmm. anything like that. I, I I know a lot of people, many of who I've talked to on this podcast, who do that, and I watch their process, I watch the videos, I watch everything like that, and then I go pick up a, a bar of Dove soap or 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 get the Doctor Teals or something like that, and it's just like. It's not the same it is, yeah. product. They got the ingredients list on there. I can actually read and comprehend the ingredients from start to finish. It's mm-hmm. crazy. I'm using this. It's smelling all crazy. Rather than I just pop this box open, it's just like I, I'm using it because I need to. So it's something about that lane, about that need, about that custom that I just that I mm-hmm. love, but I know for the creators and everything, it's exciting for y'all. It can definitely be frustrating. It can definitely be time consuming, like you said. But when it's something that you love, when it's your passion, when that's what you're in. Oh man, you're gonna go hard for it every time. So in speaking about frustrations and speaking about difficulties, so obviously switching into not sw- I wouldn't even really say switching, but expanding your versatility, getting into the fabrics, getting into the customs, everything like that. It's an it, I wouldn't say it's a night and day difference, but I could imagine that there were some differences from what you were doing before into what you switched over to. Were you met with any immediate difficult like transitions like obstacles like hurdles was it any was it kind of an eye-opening experience for you or once you really kind of stepped into the custom lane it was just like oh i love this let's let's get right who next um even to right now to this day i have a lot of difficulties with a lot of stuff sizing making sure because you know women there's plenty of people who order medium. There might be a variety of mediums out there. So it's kind of hard to have like a standard medium that fits everybody across the board. Finding fabrics. I did not know I had to do so much research into the fabric world to understand what type of fabric has this type of stretch, what type of fabric does this, that, what can be worn outside, what can't be worn outside, things like that frustrations with the creating process there was so many pieces that just I thought it was gonna come out so nice I was feeling good I turn it inside out and it's all like swapped up messed up all type yeah it, it's a lot it was a, it, a lot of trial and error even to this day I have a lot of trial and error but um with the people who have shopped with me they've been very understanding I've traveled to um do alterations and everything like I, it's it's definitely a business that takes a lot of my time and effort and i honestly wouldn't trade it like i i enjoy it all the frustrations all the errors all the everything is it's it's a great process for me and that's why you're great and that's why you'll continue to be great because in the same sentence you said it's frustrating but i love it so i, I don't know how many people would continue to love things that frustrate them but when it comes to your business <laughs> entrepreneurship when it comes to your craft you have to just step into mm-hmm. a different mindset a different you know like you said you're traveling to make alterations you're i'm pretty sure you're very communicative with your people because two to four weeks yeah people are asking some people order stuff they ask in the next hour hey is it on the way yet? Or how's it going? Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, everything all right. So I could imagine two to four weeks, they probably looking like, oh, well, what's she post today? Oh, is she just this to my else? Or because even sometimes with the podcast, I gotta tell people like, cause like I said, I love to kind of record ahead of time. 
So I tell people, mm-hmm. look, if you see three episodes dropping, don't think I forgot about you. Just know for a fact that like I just got to line stuff up the way I do. So no, I know how people get, especially with clothes, especially when you're spending money, time, everything like that. But you know, the fact that you know, you recognize that this was going to come with trial and error. It was going to come with obstacles. Could you have predicted or could you have stopped everyone? No. But at the same time, has that allowed you to further appreciate the process and want to keep going? Absolutely. So I, I love to see that. I love to hear that. And it's a testament to, you know, who you said, like who you who you surrounded yourself with your target audience, because these are not women who, you know, are, are not being unprofessional. They recognize that. Look, she's doing her. She's trying her hardest. She communicated. She made it happen. She does great work because obviously I, I think a lot of times what people fail to realize is that we get frustrated. We get mad. We, we, we kind of stalk these companies and things like that. It's only <laughs> worried in a sense, or maybe because you were last minute or things like that. Why I say that is because, okay, let me just say, let, let's say I shop with, hmm, who do I hear a lot of crazy stuff about, about? Oh, let's do the Fashion Nova. I've never shopped with Fashion Nova before, but I can tell you, I can go down my follow list and I can point out some people who I've seen cursing out Fashion Nova, reposting, saying I'm never shopping here again, sending stuff back. Can still shop with Still them. shopping there. You know, we, <laughs> we ain't going to tag no folks, call no names. But so I think about Fashion Nova and then I think about you. I think about that if I got a if I got an email notification from Fashion Nova saying my, my package is delayed, is the lip, I'm pissed. I'm just like, hold on, like y'all had one job, like what is going on? Like y'all didn't delay taking my money, but y'all delayed the shipping. What is going on? I need this now. I don't care about what's going on with COVID shipping overseas. <laughs> you know, that's how people get y'all are a big company. Y'all need to have this together. Like now, right. Y'all, it, was, it said it was available. Now y'all telling me it's out of style. You got to send me another size. Okay. So that's the fashion oversight. Then I think about the use side. Okay. You telling me off rip two to four weeks. I'm just like, okay. Well, one, she's not this big, just warehouse, just got stuff ready to just ship. Two, mm. work. Scroll through scroll through the page, y'all. And I'm only telling y'all to do that because I've done it. It's to the point I get a little jealous sometimes. Some of the stuff I see the ladies rocking, it's just like, dang, like, that's fire. I know. Okay, fellas, I'm going to get more stuff coming for y'all. <laughs> fellas, if there's one thing I'm going to do on the podcast, man, is advocate for the male voice. I, I feel like, you know, a lot of times women make dope things like accessories, bags, lashes, Hurt. and leave y'all out of and it and we just look just because i don't carry a tote or just because i don't got the piercings or nothing like that now i'm just sitting here just regular just dry just now i gotta throw the Nike <laughs> on or something like nah so i look at the work then i look at the testimonials then i look at she was telling me why it takes two to four weeks oh not just because shipping is probably the last of her concerns it's the fabric it's figuring out the stretch. It's figuring out that there's not a universal medium out there. So for me, I order a large only because I'm not a large in a shirt, like, but I'm a large in the arms. Like I put my, I order a medium, I'm gonna look crazy. So I have to get large and things like that. But you know, having to shop like that is different. I go to a home store, their large looks totally good. See, dog agree with me too. The store, the large is is this. Another store is two totally different things. So I definitely do. I, I I feel the comparison. I feel the contrast because it's just like, you know, when it's custom, when it's you, when it's you building your foundation, you going from, from scratch compared to like a warehouse, you, we got to treat these different. A lot of times we don't, we're quick to get, you know, frustrated. We're quick to, you know, be on the call. I feel like here's my soapbox real quick. So I feel like I hate the idea that when people get bad customer service with a particular small business or brand, they are immediately, and I'm not saying everybody, but they are quick to out that brand, tag them, block them, just all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just like you don't have the same level of patience that you do with these Targets, with these Walmarts, with these stores that stereotype us from the rip, with these stores that don't care about us, with these stores that don't even take the time to be personable to, or who take the money off rip and it's just like that. But whereas you're out of small mm-hmm. business, who might have given you a refund? Who might have given you the refund and the product? Who might have given you a coupon towards the next? Who might have uh, sincerely and thoroughly apologized, which you don't always get from customer service without yelling, without doing all of that. But we're quick to just, you know, put our own folks out there, put our colleagues out there, not recognizing that these small businesses were, the, well, these bigger businesses and these companies, they were the same way at one point. They don't all, and, and yeah. still they're on a bigger scale and still making people mad. So, so at the end yeah. of the day, where do you, where's the win in that? Because it's, that's not, mm-hmm. team, when you get to your grand scale, when you and all the stores and everything like that. There's still gonna be people who who are upset, but y'all gotta keep the mm-hmm. same energy that y'all keep with everybody across the board. So that's my big thing. I can't don't out these people, man. You can have a bad experience. I've had bad experiences, whether it come to giveaways, whether it come to my own product, whether it come to other products. 
you talk to these people, you figure it out, or you recognize, you think about, oh, well, in my Amazon, my packages don't always get delivered. It's broken, it's damaged, it's everything like that. Think about think about how you address things and think about how you kind of come at people who, like you said, this takes up a lot of their time. They're doing other things. They're still trying to financially support themselves and their business just the same. So that's just my that's just my thing, man. But I, I love you. And I feel it. And that's why I don't when it comes to ordering for, from smaller businesses or creatives and just people who I know are crafting stuff from hand that takes time i even i don't never question like okay where's my order like what's going on like i might ask oh like i know this is uh sorry about my dog i know this is something that's supposed to come to me every month like i have a a monthly subscription to somebody who's an artist and one time i didn't get her thing and i'm like okay well i know every month i'm supposed to get this or whatever and she explained it was like the address mix up or something like that and she instantly sent me that in the month that it was then there right that same day so it's just like you know i understand small businesses and stuff and coming from a creative it's like i get not to like hound on people like yo what's going on like i just ordered this two weeks ago where's it at you know like and it and it's like crazy because the smaller businesses are so much more able to communicate with you versus these larger corporations. Cause I swear if I call fashion Nova customer service, what are, they, they not going to know who I am. They're not going to like personally apologize, nothing. They might just send me a little email saying like, like you said, Oh, your item is now out of stock. You know, it'll take seven processing days to get you a refund or whatever. Like, they don't never be like, okay, well, we'll send you this still and give you a refund or we'll work with you this way and that way. Like, it's, yeah, it's you. definitely like different. It's a different experience. I resonate with that story too about that. I don't know if you talk, I don't know if we're talking about the same person, but when I relocated my apartment, basically, yeah, I was subscribed to this person's Patreon. I was getting their stickers every month. Uh, big shout out to Carly, man. But pretty much, oh yeah, yep. missed, yes. big shout out. <laughs> I had missed the, I had missed the. Well, I didn't update my address on the Patreon website, so it was actually my fault. Like, why this happened? So, mm-hmm. I, but I'm seeing the charge come out for like two, three months. I'm just like, hey, well, where are them stickers at? Like, what's you know what's going on? Like, what happened? So I hit her up. We we low key like reached out to each other almost at the. She said, hey, I was just. I, I think she might have even reached out to me. You know what? I think she might have reached out to me too. And she was just like, "Hey, like I noticed, like some of the stuff got sent back. Is everything okay?" I said, "Hold on, give me one second. Check the address." I said, "Oh, I've been out of this place for like a few months now. Do you? I I, I feel like I've kind of forfeited the other ones, but can you update my address and send this month's here?" She sent like all. She sent like five at a time, and I said, "Wow, you know, like you're not you're not getting." I got an email from Amazon this morning telling me that my package was undeliverable. We'll give you a refund in three to five days. What do you mean? What does yeah. <laughs> like? What do you mean? I still need it. Obviously, I ordered it. I still need my package. Like and people think that sometimes the refund is just the way to just solve everything. I don't want the. Re- if I wanted the refund, I wouldn't have ordered the product. I would have kept my money. You know? Mm-hmm. Why are you ta- how right. how is something under how is a delivery service telling me that something is undeliverable? With no, you like what does that what does that mean? That's so broad. So it's just like you know, it's a it's a bit it's a and it take about an hour to get in contact with somebody who can answer your question, and then they might not even know the answer either. So it's like okay, where do I go? And I literally told myself, I said, yeah. you know, you need to call customer service. I said, but one, I'm not calling them on my lunch break. Two, I know if I get a 20 minute window, the whole 20 minutes is going to be spent pressing buttons just to get placed on another 30 minute hold. So I got to do this when I get home. So now I got to do this when I see I'm already I I know the customer service game. I know how this is going to work, you know, and I feel like there's such a a big difference between, you know, just the bigger businesses, the smaller businesses. So, yes, man, give these people grace, essentially, you know, allow these people to recognize that they have lives, too, just the same. They're not automated. They're not machines. They don't have a warehouse just full of people just pushing out stuff for them at the same time. These are everyday people mm-hmm. with, with nine to five. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. I think, I think about expansion. I think about, you know, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be up there. You're going to be, we're going to replace the fashion. No, we're going to replace the Sheehan's. We're going to replace the wherever. Uh, the, please somebody wherever replace shop. Shein, please. Places, yeah. <laughs> the places I don't shop, but everybody else shop and complain about, we're going to replace them all. So, in thinking about, you know, where 
almost halfway through the year at this point. Wow, crazy to say. But mm. one, are you most are you excited about anything? Is there anything that you're kind of looking forward to? We've obviously talked about a few of the spaces where you started, where you've kind of worked your way, and then where you're at, and then what you're thinking. So is there anything mm-hmm. that you're kind of thinking about without obviously, I mean, something on a podcast we do. I try to pull stuff out of people, you know. Sometimes I try to mm-hmm. try to really dig deep a little bit. Obviously, some things people tell me, look, I can't disclose. That's a secret. Okay. I respect it. But for everything else that I can just pull up out of you, is there anything that you know the ladies, the fellas can be looking forward to? Is there anything that you're most excited for as we, you know, continue to push through this year? Any kind of initiatives, collaborations, or any just spaces that you're stepping into for the first time? Um. So, you know, I'm going to just share what I actually kind of already have kind of shared ish um for people who do follow my business page and actually pay attention um so as you know i have when i read it i did a rebrand towards the end of last year um just kind of i talked to monet about how i should do my instagram you know marketing type of strategies and stuff like that um shout outs to her um so she kind of helped me with you know doing photo shoots all this so i started the rebrand with um a zodiac capsule and i only did earth first because earth sounds the best anyway so i was like okay well i can't just do one capsule and not continue it but for my yearly anniversary i decided to drop a basics collection where i just brought back the stuff that i first created which is this shirt and a few other shirts and some you know just basic stuff that anybody can really wear and style themselves versus a whole collection of new stuff like I did for the earth earth capsule. So speaking of Zodiac capsules and stuff, so the next one will be fire. I don't know the exact time that or date that I want to drop it. I'm still kind of brainstorming and there will be some male stuff on this capsule, I think. So um, look out for that. I'm kind of aiming for like the August, um, just in time for like Leo season. Um, just cause I kind of want to incorporate all the fire signs. So I think wait until August will give me enough time and it'll be like a good time to drop it. Um, and also in August, I was contacted by somebody who hosts like, um, fashion, fashion week in North Carolina. They have like a fashion week or whatever. And he has contacted me about being in the fashion show so that I'm kind of excited about that. I don't know if it's like set in stone yet. Um, because previously I was supposed to be a part of a fashion show last year, but due to COVID they had to cancel it. Um, and they never hit me back up about rescheduling it or anything like that. Um, so hopefully I can get with that. And that's actually a set in stone thing. Um, as far as the brand, that's really all I have secret wise that's coming up. But as I told you before, I have a style page now and that's kind of like one of the passions that I really want to do is style people, be like a celebrity stylist one day, something like that. Um, and I just started my Instagram page. So for that, I'm hoping to get more content like YouTube videos, um, pricing i've been getting uh contacted about people wanting me to style outfits and things like that so that's exciting um yeah that's that's all i got that i want to share for right now yeah so so that lets me know that she holding on to to some gems y'all you can't give it all i wouldn't give it all either even if i had it but nah Mm -hmm. i love that sometimes the power of a rebrand the power of just you know, getting in the lab, sitting down with an expert. And I truly mean an expert like Monet to really, you know, sit you down really. And sometimes it's just a matter of you're not doing anything wrong. Just where are you thinking about this? Or did you try that? Mm-hmm. Did you try that? A lot of times people think that, you know, when we're getting advice, when we're sitting in these consultations, when we're trying to better our business, it's a thing of they're just going to rip you apart and things like that. And granted, there can be specific cases where that happens. You know, you get ripped apart and things like that. But it's all in nature of you to be successful, to, to continue to expand. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it is really just sharpening things, crossing a couple of T's, dotting a couple of I's. You know, it's more so, hey, you got the vision. You got the overall purpose. You got the overall message behind this. But hey, did you try that? Or did you get that angle? 
or did you post here? Right, these right. Hashtags? And I know Monet is very intentional and specific with that. And that's why people, you know, it takes you from here to here. So I'm excited, man. I, I definitely do hate to hear that COVID definitely dampened some of your, your plans and your moves, but I definitely don't think that it's the end, man. I definitely think that, like you said, things are coming. Some things are, are getting set in stone. Some things are happening, but it's only it's only going to get better with time. I'm excited for you to to drop this fire capsule though as a fire sign. I definitely was 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 looking to see where we fall in this order, and I was only accepting us next or say the best for last. We couldn't have been third. That would have just been a little awkward for me. So I like yeah I, yeah. But no, I'm like, <laughs> but no, I'm definitely. I, I think that that's very creative. See, it's, it's things like that that allow people to you know, oh wow, well I've never seen another brand. Or boutique or anything like that they're not dropping themed capsules based off the zodiac or anything that's just things that you know we sit down we really start to brainstorm and get ourselves together oh this is what i want to do this is what i want to make happen so all right fellas mm -hmm. y'all heard it so look i can't be the only one that holds her accountable we all got to hold her accountable slide in the dm slide uh -uh, no i don't want to hear nobody in my dms asking me where the fellas at because <laughs> I know, I know, but i but i will also i'm always saying the same breath look if you're gonna call her out if you're gonna if you're gonna press her or send the eyes or make something happen, make sure you support. Make sure when she reposts the what she just made or the two piece that she just made with some iron or one piece or what she cut, you repost that just the same because I always talk about how as fellas, like yes, we look for what's good, what look good for us, but think about your ladies. Think about your sister, your mothers, your aunts. Think about mm -hmm. your life. Send them this way. Send them, send them I'm gonna get them right. Yeah, a lot of times <laughs> we, we, we just get so one track minded that it's just like, oh, if I can't shop here, I'm looking the other way. Oh, but what about all your homegirls and all your, your your relatives who looking for something different, who she can, and this is really different because she can tailor it to you. It's not something that they just got to look mm -hmm. at. Oh, I got to pick between these five. No, they they have, they got options. Per what Fatima talked about, mm -hmm. they got options. She could, she could really just make it happen. She says she, she did the basics. She worked her way up. She's here where she is. So no, I definitely do think, like I said, I encourage everybody, check out the page. The work does a lot of speaking for itself. So before we get into you know the social media before we get into where people can find you and everything like that do you feel like there's anything that we haven't touched on today do you feel like there's anything you want to share whether it be for up and coming business owners and entrepreneurs whether it be for the ladies out there whether it be for people who will be listening to this interview anything like that anything you feel went went un, un, unsaid today um yes i kind of want to touch on the style aspect um I've talked about it kind of how my style started the business and how I'll think of outfits and I can't find a certain piece or whatever. That's how the business started. And the bit, the, my brand slogan is actually let your style speak for you. So, um, coming from somebody who's a very introverted, it's really hard for me to like people to really know who I am, but anybody will spot me and be like oh i like your outfit i like your shirt i like them pants like them shoes you know your style actually really does speak for you like when i see somebody and i see how they're dressed i'm like i can automatically assume like something about their personality just based on how they put an outfit together and um style versus fashion is one thing i want to hit on um uh, with the style page i'll be doing more in depth of stuff like that but i feel like being style is kind of like you knowing who you are because you have your own style it's like individual versus being fashionable you can kind of go on instagram scroll on the explore page be like oh i like them pants i'm gonna get them pants i kind of like the whole outfit i'm gonna just buy that whole outfit you know like and there's nothing wrong with that but i feel like once you really tap into your individuality and you're able to really understand what you feel comfortable wearing and what you feel putting outfits together it'll be easier to style yourself in general like and i kind of wanted to just touch on that because that's something i'm going to touch on on my style page like right now people um who check out my style page is kind of like me posting my outfits and me posting the outfit details and how i put it together but like for future references where people want me to style them i'm also going to touch on how to figure out how to style even yourself like you don't want to just go on fashion nova buy an outfit you see you know on fashion nova those websites the model is already wearing kind of an outfit they already get styled generically by the marketing team you know and personally i don't ever go by what they wear on the websites because i'm like who we like that doesn't even look right together like so 
I personally just kind of encourage people like figure out what kind of style they like. And even if you have multiple styles, that's fun because you can go from being preppy to artsy to sexy to turn it like you 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 have different ranges and it's like it's it's fun when you really get into it because it's like you going from styling yourself for a vacation and now you're kind of like oh this is fun like I got a whole notepad of just outfits that I throw together write it out piece it go online find it versus like going online starting from nowhere and just following what somebody else is wearing then it's like you're kind of becoming somebody who's just trendy and doing fast fashion versus somebody you're buying stuff that will last you years because there's stuff in my closet that i got from that way back like i don't I, my size is the same so i'm able to keep some of the same clothes but like i got stuff that i could still wear to this day and it still be fire just because i know my style and i know that I'm not just buying fast fashion, which a lot of these boutiques like Fashion Nova, Shein, all these places, they sell fast fashion. And it's just like, you know, you don't want to have your closet full of stuff that you got to sell within two months because it's no longer a trend anymore or it's not something that you find other people wearing anymore. And that's something I want to touch on with the Zodiac because you do see people doing Zodiac collections, but it'll be like a t-shirt that got like, sun sign on it or like something like a graphic tee put in like leos are the best or you know something like that you <laughs> you know but it's just like you know you want to do something different you want to figure out who you are individually and i think that's something that i want to touch on with my style page and going forward so that's what i wanted to share with that and hopefully with my brand now kind of tie in with figuring out how you are since the brand slogan is um, let your style speak for you. I love that, man. I, I definitely think, well, for all of my uh, audio listeners, Leo's are the best. I didn't see me give her some love when she said that. So big shout out to her for that. Uh, that probably, they're not, that probably is a shirt. The, well, you, I mean, you put that on a shirt, so you, you, you didn't just come up with that. You could have picked any sign and you, you know, you went there. So, um, so we just going, yeah, you know, you know, we don't even got, we don't even got to address it no more. It's okay. You said it. It's all good. Let your, let your style speak for itself. But no, I think that's essential. I think it's essential one to just have a vision, have a vision for you, for your brand, for others, but two, to recognize that sometimes you need to tailor that everything is not going to be for every person. Like you said, ah, as soon as you said fast fashion, I knew exactly what you were talking about. Just those things that, you know, people just put out. And it's like, yo, otherwise you have, you would not have brought that. You would not have worn that, had that site not put it like that, had that model not put it like that. Have you seen? Because I'm not going to lie. I'm one person who, something that I, <laughs> something that I pay attention to now, like I pay attention to mannequins, like in stores and just different things like that. And sometimes I walk past some of these mannequins. I'm just like. Who styled like, them? Yeah. I'm running out of clothes. Like what happened here? Like what, you know, like, why? <laughs> I was on the website. It's like, why are you, you're trying to sell me the shirt, but you didn't put any bottoms on that complimented or made me want to buy the shirt. Because a lot of times, yes, I'm, I'm, I know what I want. I know kind of my style or my particular thing of fashion. But sometimes if something just does not look right or if it's not marketed right or sold right, it can turn you off from something or it can have you buy it. Mm -hmm. It's not for you because we've all seen things. Help, we might have even done it ourselves. You bought something. You put it on or you, you kind of try it or you just like hey, it's not really my speed it kind of looked good on the hanger yeah. on the screen but not at all, <laughs> mm -hmm. can't really you know and then we have those things where because i have some fits like that or some shoes like that where i can only wear this with like one thing or like two things or like i gotta get this away or like this can never come out or i can only wear these with this particular shirt i have to have those particular mm -hmm. things. otherwise no fit you know so i think that is one important to be able to do that be able to kind of have a vision for yourself, be able to kind of have something that you want people to be able to look at. But two, I think it's also important that you give different variations of that, which it really sounds like you're doing to me. You're, you're saying that, look, there's no right or wrong way to, well, it's a right or wrong way to do this for sure. But when it comes to you, <laughs> finding your style, finding what works and what doesn't work for you, that can be a, a process. That can be you online, mm -hmm. that can be getting custom made things. That can be mixing and matching from different stores in different places. So I'm very interested, you know, to see that. Which is the key, mixing and matching. Mixing and matching. 
when you're shopping is the key like I never buy my whole outfit from one website because obviously that one website is not going to have what I need you know so some websites are good for dresses some websites are good for their shoes some websites are good for their accessories you know and I feel like you know a lot of people just go I know we keep saying fashion over they need to you know give us some money for this because we keep using them but Fashion Nova is a perfect example. A lot of people found Fashion Nova and that's the only thing they shop on. And it's like, I automatically could see somebody and what they're wearing and be like, that's Fashion Nova. Because it's like their stuff is catered to not a certain crowd, but you could tell just by the way it is styled, like fits and all that. Because I don't get me wrong, I shop at Fashion Nova too for some stuff, not my whole outfit or not like not buying a whole haul of stuff from Fashion Nova, but some of their pieces are really nice. You know, they do tailor the body really well. You know, that's one thing Fashion Nova is great at. But yeah, I can automatically know when somebody's shopping from Fashion Nova. Even Shein, I can know when people shop from there too, because they use a lot of the same patterns just with different pieces or something. Like they, you know, it, it, it just, I just automatically can know where people shop at just from looking at a piece or outfit. That's how I feel about like those pack signs, those zoomies, those those stores like that. Like you start Yeah, see- like I already know what jeans you're wearing. Like I know those are from Pack Sun or I know that that top is from Pack Sun. Like granted they have nice stuff too. Like none of these stores like I would never shop at, you know? Like but it's just like I think it's always better to buy something that only you have cuz like that's something like, "Oh, well this is like nobody no other website i can get this bag from no other website i can get this shirt from you know these jeans that i custom made nobody else has these you know like because you can go on a website and you can see like patchwork jeans on there but fifty thousand, fifty million people might have that same pair of jeans versus you going to me and i'm making your custom jeans i'm not gonna make the same exact pair that i just sold to somebody else because I wouldn't want to do that. I mean, even if somebody is literally like, I want those exact pair, it's still not going to be exactly the same as like, and I put that in the description, like nothing's going to be exactly the same that you see on the website because everything varies when you're creating, especially when it's different sizes, different styles, things like that. So, you know, definitely in the mannequin thing. Yeah. I used to work in retail and I hated how they dress the mannequins. Like, cause how is this even supposed to sell the product? I don't understand. Like I would, I'm looking at this mannequin. I would not buy not one thing on the mannequin. Woo. That's a message though, man. I, 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 I couldn't agree more and I couldn't, you know, it's, it's just funny too, how I think about how that mindset of mine has grown or how it's changed, how it's matured just for different areas and different phases and stages and even places depending on sometimes your style can really depend on just where you're located, where you are, what the weather is, Mm -hmm. people, university, school, everything like that. So I want to start a pot before we, before we close. So, all right, give me, give me two things. Give me, (laughs) give me a store you absolutely, absolutely would not shop at. And then give me one of your probably like your top, like favorite stores to shop at. Um, I'll stop at the top because that's easy. Um, Pretty Little Things. It's not actual store. It's just an online boutique. But I literally have most of half my closet is from them just because they have so many pieces that are so in my style that I could style so easily. And a lot of people don't shop with them just because they say they're a little pricey. But see, if you get the app, you get a bigger discount with the app versus going on the website, ladies. So definitely check them out and only shop with them if they have a percentage off, which they always have at least 40% off everything. So I feel like, you know, that's a good deal for me, at least, because you're probably about to pay the same amount on Fashion Nova, to be honest, because Fashion Nova very rarely has sales or if they do, it's kind of like, 30% off jeans and it's like okay well what if I need a dress this time and not jeans so somewhere that I would absolutely not shop at hmm. Mm -hmm. that's hard because I feel like I've shopped at a lot of places it's places that I wouldn't constantly shop at um 
Okay, I shop at Target, but I don't really shop their clothes really because, and I used to work there. So I just find it that their clothes, sometimes the fitting is weird. Um, and they also have a lot of fast fashion. Um, and some of the stuff that they try to sell just doesn't go with, with some, my style. And even some of the stuff is not something that I would style. Um, but it's still not somewhere I would absolutely not shop at just because you never know. Like, that's like me saying I'll never shop at Walmart, but I might go and buy a graphic tee from there or something like, you know, because Walmart got some nice graphic tees. If you really pay attention, some people try to bash Walmart clothes, but you can find some nice stuff in there and it's cheap, you know? So I don't know. I don't know where I would absolutely not shop at. I don't really have a place that's like terrible um yeah all right i'm trying to get away from shopping at shein though because they steal a lot of stuff from creators and don't give credit um but i think a lot of companies do that and i just don't i don't want to be that creator that i'm looking at shein i'm scrolling their stuff and i see something i've created on there and it's like oh you know because actually that has happened to me um with mark jacobs their tote bags I have a whole bag that I made that's like the zebra print um, like purse and they have that same pattern and fabric and they incorporate it now into their tote bags. And I'm like, I've, I've literally been using that fabric for almost like about to be two years. But Mark Jacobs, they get in all the sales and people are like, oh, my God, this cheetah print is so fire. And it's just so it's it's hard to watch when, you know, a big brand takes over something that you kind of started, but nobody knows about thinking, you know, that you started it, you know? So, yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Very interesting. But you know, only goes to show that where it only goes to show where your head is at, where your fashion mindset is, where, you know, if you, if that's happening now, imagine when, cause, cause for me, I'm, I'm big in like, it, it just takes that one whether it be person, moment, share, sale, repost, word of mouth, interaction, like that's all it's going to take. Like, yo, like, well, you seen this? Like, whoa, whoa, wait, didn't they, but she did, but she made, hold on, we got to, so for me, hearing things like that, hearing one, no, you're absolutely right. That's very frustrating. That's very, you know, just, it can, you can almost lose motivation in a sense, lose passion, lose drive behind things like that. But, why I say do the complete opposite, let it motivate you, is because it lets you know that you're already on the right track. Brands are going to do, they only do that because, like you said, why does this fast fashion and things come out? I used to work at Target as well. Only shop really their athletic wear. I worked in the electronics department, though. But uh, mm -hmm. but no, it's a thing of, you know, what is going to sell real quick? What is going to catch the people's eye? What is going? Why, why is she getting so much traction doing that? Why does she even think to to use that? How does she put this back, mm -hmm. this design, and make this happen? Wow. That's genius. Let's do it. You know, just that that's how it works in these bigger companies. Whereas you, you bought fabric, you probably bought multiple pieces of fabric, different fabric, trial and error, making things happen. And they just gonna put it, you know, in a factory, make it, you know. So no, I stay, I say continue to stay steadfast, stay true to you, because at the end of the day, if they have to do that, it's just letting you know that one, their their team or wherever that is coming from, they, they run it out of something. They they losing something. They not tackling something. Obviously, the right people are not in the right rooms because y'all are having to pull from other places. But for you, the fact that your mind is always going, okay, they took that design. Well, I know if they took that one, they'll damn sure take another one. Let me keep it going. Mm -hmm. Let me try another fabric. Right. Yeah. So it, it just lets you know how creative you are and how much you really. I mean, I, I I from the time I started this till now, like I've just heard the passion. I've seen the passion. Like I said, I followed the page. I've seen the, the ladies tag you. I've seen what you make. I've seen you even. I've, I've kind of seen the process of it. Like I didn't catch the, the brushes by T part, but I caught, you know, when you were just doing this for yourself and then you started doing it for other people. And now you're kind of getting into the style thing and now you're trying to educate people, but at the same time still push your brand and what you're doing. So I, I love to see it. I'm very excited for it. I, like I said, I'm going a, I'm to a stay on you just because we need the we need the men's line for sure. And if we got to look, if we got to collaborate. Y'all not that important. If we got to get in the lab a little bit. Well, we need the we need the fire capsule side of the Zodiac, please. We can, we can, the fellas can hold off. They can wait, be a little patient. Patience is a virtue for sure. But no, I definitely mm -hmm. am, am very excited. I'm very excited to see, because even as you were talking, I'm just thinking about people who I know who do fashion shows, 
who are who make their own who not necessarily make their own clothes but have their own brands but could use customs are trying to get with different products and things like that so i already have people who i'm thinking about who i want to connect you with summer in north carolina my boy is in Philly. He does a lot of fashion shows, has his own brand. But I know that if he could, let's just say you sent some of your custom stuff to him and they modeled it. Now you got pull in Philly. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now he has a store. Mm -hmm. there. What if you wanted to go to one of the pop-up shop events or wanted to do one of the fashion shows? Or they asking, yo, where did you get that from? Oh, that's Ali Fendich right there. That's that That's that exclusive. That's that, you know, that one-on-one. Oh, well, we need that. You know, and that's what I, that's how I think. That's my brand. That's where collaboration and things like that go for me. Not, oh. Well, she got her brand. I got my brand. She does customs. I kind of do mine a little bit differently. We don't. Right. I wanted to touch on that too with the frustrations. A lot of these, um, uh, I don't really know that many males that create stuff from fabric. Um, most of the males I know that have clothing brands, they kind of do their designs and get like a not a wholesale, but like um, a manufacturer to create their stuff. Like. Juan Jay, you know, he doesn't hand make the hoodie, you know, so that's, but he still puts in his craft to go and make designs different. He doesn't just slap the same design on every single thing, you know, he comes out with new stuff. But like with women, I see more of them doing like the whole from fabric to creating and all that stuff. And they're, um, I feel like it's hard. I've met some creators that were very, open to collaborations, open to helping, you know, the next creator out and stuff. But then I've also encountered some people that were kind of like, oh, I've been blocked from a business page before because <laughs> I don't know if they thought I was going to take their designs or I was trying to see what they was doing or anything like that. But I was following them to support, you know, because I know the process. I know how long it takes. I know the craft behind it. So that's like, it wasn't really a frustration for me, but it was kind of eye opener to see that this is probably what a lot of designers deal with in the industry. And it's probably just going to get worse at the more I, I go up because it's going to be haters everywhere you go. And it's just sad that we're both at the same, we're at the same, like we hit the same communities in you're already like that it's kind of hard to still support you you know so that's yeah that was kind of like a eye opener for me and it's it's sad because i'm like i'm a collaborate i'm open to helping the next person like if somebody i even am planning i might do like a sewing class maybe you know just to get people to learn how to do stuff because i know i was self-taught i just watched youtube videos like i didn't take no classes to learn how to sew my mom was a seamstress way back. So she kind of like just handed me down her sewing machine and it was busted and everything. So then I invested in another one and now I got like three sewing machines like added to my collection. So I'm open to helping people. It's just sad when you realize there's a lot of people who don't kind of, I don't have the same mindset as you. It's, it's sad. Man, I, I couldn't have said it any better myself. It's something that as I insert myself more and more in this space and just work with more people and meet with more people and kind of hear their stories and see their backgrounds and see kind of where they come from and see who could have been of help or who should have been of help. And yeah, it's, it's just, you know, but it's something that I also say in the same breath, it's just like, use that. You continue to use that as fuel, continue to allow that to, 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 to honestly propel your passion. I think that that's, I think about, you know, some of the people who I could have collaborated with or who I should have collaborated with by now or maybe just wasn't in that zone. I think about different brands, different, I think back to ECU days, organizations that just should have collabed and the people who should have worked together and things that could have been done differently had, you know, we just unified a little bit. So, and I'm, and I'm, and I know just from your involvement in what you did at ECU that you, you know, you, you resonate with that same sentiment, but at the end of the day, man, I'm, I'm so big and I'm such in the space now where it's just like, look, as long as the right people are getting into it, I'll continue to preach to the choir. I'll continue to keep those around me. You know, we're ready for it. We want to work. We want to collab. Because at the end of the day, we the, we the ones. Like, we the, we're going to be these next set of people, these next set of big businesses, these next set of big brands. We're just right, going, right. We're going through our process right now. So I love that, man. And people don't see the, the bigger picture of that really we all connect in one. You know, like, I'm sure person you said in Philly, I'm sure I might have already seen some of his work or something, like, you know, so it's kind of like... I posted something today with it, so, and I have one of his hoodies, and I have 
I got his band on and things like that. So it's just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm all in the space of that. The right people will find the right people. Sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes it just takes opportunity. Sometimes it takes reiterating something because sometimes, you know, we mm-hmm. things out being open minded yeah. too. And you have to recognize that. Look, you, you got to want to get better. Like you said, you follow the brand maybe for support or for motivation. Or just to, or just to show love, or something like that. But everybody don't have that, you know. Everybody don't. Oh, they see here. Yeah, they don't realize that there's enough money for everybody to eat. Really, like I'm sure these same people that shop with you probably would shop with me. It's not like I'm gonna take your your bag. It's not like I'm making the same exact things as you because that's another thing. I'm not gonna follow a ba- page and make something that I've already seen being made. You know, that's that's another reason I follow a lot of creators just because I don't want to create something that's already been created. I want to start, I want to make something that I know for a fact is coming from my head and only going to be on my website, you know? So, yeah. It's a fact, man. That's a fact. So look, I'm very happy. I thank you for taking this time to sit down with me. I thank you for giving my, my audience, your audience, everybody out there, just a little bit of deeper look into what you do, kind of how you got here, kind of what you you know, what you're expecting moving forward, teased a little bit, but you know, even what, um, just how you're thinking, just what you want to even be able to provide and educate with other people, because a lot of what you're doing, one, yes, you're doing the customs, you're doing different things like that and working with people and providing that service, but you're also doing a lot of education. You taught me a few things today, just on here, and I'm excited for you to move into that style versus fashion direction on your page, because I think that that will, I think that that will be of, of value to a lot of people, people both in your industry, but people like myself who like to look nice, like to wear very nice, fashionable things, but wouldn't necessarily consider themselves in the fashion industry. Because, yeah, I like to you know, I like mm-hmm. to throw that on. I like to put it on, whatever you call it. But when it comes to just like some of the terminologies and just different things and what's in what's not. No, I'm not the most versed on that. But if it looks mm-hmm. fire, am I going to order that thing? Yes, I'm going to order that thing. So but nah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you to everybody who has continuously you know kept us alive made it happen the down to business podcast man we've definitely been able to do a lot man 100 plus episodes is, is no short of god's blessing and just a testament to all of my interviewees and business owners like fatima man who've really come on here and really made this happen but who in a sense are chasing their dreams and who continuously motivate me who just talking to y'all hearing y'all learning from y'all laughing with y'all being frustrated with y'all everything like that i get it but it it, it continuously allows me to continue to work to continue to want to do it man so if there's anything you know that I can do to tap you in, like I said, I definitely want to put you in contact with some people. So you'll definitely be hearing from me offline with that. But other than that, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate the time. Ladies, tap in. Fellas, stay patient. I'm going to make sure she... Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me express my brand, my future endeavors and such. Oh, yeah. Not a problem. So, yeah, to everybody out there, man, this has been another episode of the Down to Business podcast. Here with Tamar Turner.